Welcome to chapter 10 of Hebrew uh, Basics in Biblical Hebrew. Today we're going to go through the homework section of chapter 10 on the Hebrew construct chain here. And let's go ahead and get this thing up here. Uh, that was, I understand that was a long chapter here. There's a lot to memorize um, as you go through to recognize, but uh, as I reaffirmed beforehand, this is a very important chapter for to be able to read here because the Hebrew construct chain is very common, very frequent within the, the scriptures, within the, the, the Hebrew text. So uh, let's go ahead and go through. Like I said, it takes time for this to, to learn this and grasp and be able to recognize these different changes in vocalizations and stuff. But um, as you go through, keep reviewing this chapter. Um, and uh, going back through the homework, it will become very evident down the road um, as you recognize these uh, these construct links and chains. All right, the first one we're going to uh, start here in Torot Hamelak Hatov Behayashar. Okay, and it's wanting us to do translation in here. So what we're going to say we have Torot, which is a the oat is telling us this is a feminine plural either absolute noun or construct noun and so like I said before when you got two nouns side by side that is a very good chance um, with, without anything separating it that is a very good chance or most likely sign to show that that is a construct chain so this uh, this could be the the laws of the king and um, so it would be the laws of the good because the Hatov is agreeing with Hamelic in gender and number and in definiteness, Veyashar and upright. So it would be the laws of the good and upright king. You would actually go from the laws of the uh, good and upright king here. All right, number two here we have is Torot Hamelic Hatovot. And here we have basically uh, we look at the the adjective and it agrees with the oat tells us it agrees it's a feminine plural ending it agrees with torot and not hamelic because hamelic is masculine so we would say the good laws of the king the good laws of the king number three we have bene has a cane. Haraim. Okay, the adjective here is a masculine plural ending. And what is it agreeing with? Is it agreeing with Zakain? No, Zakain is masculine singular. It's agreeing with Benay, which is masculine plural. And the, and the um, Sarah Yod here is telling us this is masculine plural construct. So this is, it would be the evil sons or the wicked sons of the elder. Number four, we have Karim Hamelik Hatov. All right, we want to look at the adjective here, Hatov. It is masculine singular, and it can agree with, uh, we have another noun here, it's just Hamelik, which is masculine singular. So it agrees with um, king, or if Karim is masculine singular, which it is, it can agree with Karim, which is the vineyard. So it could either go, uh, say, the uh, vineyard of the good king, the vineyard of the good king, that way. Or it could say the good vineyard of the king. Either way, it would be um, grammatically possible. So it just basically just depends on context at that point which one it is because Hatov is masculine singular it would be a uh, attributive adjective to either Karim the vineyard or to Melek the king we have Mishpate HaMelek Hayashar Verchasadik alright what we want to look at is the adjectives here we have Hayashar which is upright it is masculine singular there's no endings here it's endingless and Hasadik is masculine singular too. So we have to look and see 
<clears throat> now, wise, what is masculine singular here? Well, it's not mishpate. Mishpate is masculine plural construct because you got the Siri Yod right there telling you that. So we must it must agree with the noun hamelic, the absolute noun hamelic, in the construct change. So we would basically be the judgments of the upright and just king, or upright and righteous king. Either way, Sadiq uh, could be the one. So that's it agrees with the noun hamelic, the absolute noun in gender, number, and indefiniteness. And that's what we want to look for. It, those endings tell us which one it agrees with. Okay, and we want to look for these construct plural endings. This is masculine construct plural ending here. Tell us that these two nouns are in construct with each other. Mishpat, mishpate, and then hamelic. Hamelic is the absolute noun. Mishpate is the construct noun. Now let's get to number six here. We have Tifilat, Hakohen, Hasadik. And what we want to look again, go back and look at the adjective here. We want to see Hasadik. What does it agree with here? Okay. Does it agree with Tifilat? No. The Patak Tav here is telling us this is feminine singular. And the adjective is masculine singular. So it can't agree with Tifilat here. It must agree with Hachohen, the priest. So it would basically, and Ot here is telling us that that is a feminine singular construct noun because the Patak Tav here. That would be the prayer of and then the righteous priest. The prayer of the righteous priest. And it's because we put the prayer. It's because Kohen has a definite article on it. And so the um, construct noun will be definite also. Remember, construct nouns in their definiteness or indefiniteness are determined by the definite article or the lack of the definite article on the absolute noun. All right, number seven here we have hey. Hekele, Hamalka, Hagadola, and so we have we look at the immediately we look at the comments say on the adjective Hagadola, we see that it uh, it can only agree with Hamalka, uh, the queen, because uh, Hekele is masculine plural for temple, so it's masculine plural temples. Um, so the adjective is, is agreeing with the uh, feminine singular noun, absolute noun here. And we would say the temples of the great queen. The temples of the great queen. All right, let's go ahead and move some up here to eight here. Eight we're going to go into is divre hasefer. Divre hasefer. And uh, we see... Divre, here, this is a masculine plural. We know it's plural, masculine, and we know it's plural because of the serayod. And we know that it's in construct because that's, it's masculine plural construct because that's the form that you'd find it in. Even if you don't recognize the vocalization here up under the first syllable, all you really need to look for and know is this serayod here. That tells you that that is masculine plural construct, not absolute. It would be Devarim if it was masculine, plural, absolute. And it's not. So uh, then we have ha Hasefer. It, it has a definite article, so it tells us that this is going to be a definite on this construct noun. It's going to say, it's going to say we're going to translate this the the words of the book. The words of the book. Okay. Avde Hanavi Hatovim. Avde Hanavi Hatovim. All right, we're going to look at the adjective here, Hatovim. What does it agree with? Does it agree with Hanavi? No, Hanavi is masculine singular. Hatovim is masculine plural. So it must agree with Avde, which this is a masculine plural construct noun. So it would be the good servants of the prophet. 
the good servants of the prophet. Number 10, we have Ashit Haish Hahu. Ashit Haish Hahu. Okay, and so what we want to look at here, here we have a demonstrative adjective here. We want to see which one it agrees with. And Hahu is masculine and singular. Ashit's not masculine and singular, it's feminine and singular. Uh, and that is the construct form. So basically, it agrees with Haish, the man. So it's say the wife of that man. The wife of that man. Ashit Haish Hahu. Number 11, Shemot B'nai Yisrael. Okay, so we want to see here. We got Shemot, which just is a either a mask. It's either a feminine plural, uh, absolute, or feminine plural construct. Again, look, we got two nouns side by side without anything breaking it apart. So Shemot is most likely a construct, feminine plural construct noun. The names of the sons of Israel. So you have Bene is masculine plural construct. So you got two mask uh, a feminine plural construct and a masculine plural construct noun side by side. Two, you got multiple constructs, and Yisrael is the absolute noun. Bot number twelve. Bot Hamaka Hayafa. Bot Hamaka Hayafa. So we have um we see Hayafa is the adjective, and it can agree with the commentary is telling us here. The commentary in this adjective is telling us that it agrees with Hamaka. Now, bot is bot. Bot's feminine, also for daughter. So the the Patak Tav is telling us that that is a um, a feminine uh, singular construct noun. So it could be either the beautiful daughter, the beautiful daughter, which would how if I be going with bot, the beautiful daughter of the queen, or the daughter of the beautiful queen. Either one. Hayafa can can either be attributed to Hamaka or Bot. Either one. Alright, let's go to number thirteen here. <clears throat> number thirteen we have Nahar Mitzraim. Uh, again, the vocalization here, you see, remember I told you, whenever you have a two-syllable word here like Nahar, and it has a Shava up under the first syllable, that is a dead ring. I'll tell you, that is a construct noun. So it would be the river of Egypt. The river of Egypt. Misraim is a proper name, and it assumes a definite article. So it would be the river, and the the goes to the river of Misraim, or the river of Egypt. That's how we translate it. Fourteen is Ashit Haish Hara. Ashit Haish Hara. Uh, we have Ashit, which is the feminine singular construct of Isha. And we see Hara. What we want to look at is, is look at the adjective. This attributive adjective is, attri is attributed to which noun? And we know that this is masculine singular because there's no comments hey here at the end. <clears throat> so it has to agree with, beginning with Haish. The wife of the wicked man. The wife of the wicked man. Number 15 is Kohave Hashemayim. Kohave Hashemayim. And this would... Um, Again, when you see in the serio at the end of the word, that's telling you that should be an indicator, just a, a red flag to tell you that it is a masculine plural construct now. Telling you that that is the stars of, and then Hashemayim gives it the definiteness. So this is the absolute noun, Hashemayim, and Kochave is the construct now. So the stars of heaven. We say in the, it literally says the, the stars of the heaven. Uh, but stars of heaven. The stars of heaven. It's what we translate in English. Number 16, we have Zechan Ha'ir Hara'ah. 
again um, we look at the adjective this has a comma it's hey ending so then we know that it's feminine and singular and we have to find out what is feminine and singular well we know that the zikon is not that's masculine singular and um, we know that that is a uh, so it must go with high ear and as I said before if you want to know the true gender of a noun the adjective the attributive adjective will tell you what the true gender of that noun is and it must agree with high ear city which is feminine this ear is a endingless a feminine endingless noun here uh, so just want to let you know on that there so we and we have zakan which hmm, the noun must be zakane I the only thing I remember zakane so we've had the reduction vowel reduction again remember look for the shiva under the first syllable if it's a two syllable word that is going to be a dead ring or tell you that, that is a construct noun and so what we've had is we've had rule one and rule two here in this that where the uh, sere reduces uh, changes to a patak and the comets under the zion reduces down to a shiva uh, there's those two rules uh, rule one a and one b in vowel reductions for the um, construct nouns so we would translate this the elder of the wicked city because uh, Hara'a, it goes with Ha'ir, <clears throat> the elder of the wicked city. All right, number 17 is Safer, Hamalka, Hayafa. Okay, we look at Safer, and that is a seglet noun. Look at that carrot right there. That tells us that is a seglet noun. And uh, just like uh, A should appear as seglet, uh, uh, basically, uh, that is telling us, remember, seglet nouns can be either um, uh, absolute or construct. And in this case, because you got you have a noun beside another noun, that is usually the indicator to tell you that that is a construct chain there. So it would be, so what we have to do is look at high F5. What does that agree with? Well, the comments hey ending here is telling us that is feminine singular. And so the only thing feminine singular that we have here that we know of is Malka. Here the comments say is telling us that is feminine singular. So we would translate this as the book of the beautiful queen. The book of the beautiful queen. Number 18, we have Neshe Hamelek Hayafot. Neshe Hamelek Hayafot. Uh, we look at the oat ending here in Yafe for beautiful, and we see that that is a feminine plural ending. But do we have anything feminine plural here? <clears throat> well, Hamelic is masculine singular, and the she is the only other thing we have here. Well, the she is the um, is actually the uh, plural feminine plural construct even though it has a seriode on it it's one of those ones that have a different ending it's what I used to call the cross-dressers um, this is actually it, it comes from the word isha and then anashim is the plural of it and then this uh, the plural absolute anashim is I mean anashim is the um, feminine plural and then uh, this is the feminine plural construct, neshe. Uh, the em reduces down to a seriot here, and then the pot, the comets reduces down to a shiva. So hayafot would go with neshe, which is it looks different, unusual, but you just have to understand that that uh, nashim, uh, that isha basically is an, is a radical noun. And so it does have an alternate, um, a different look to it. And so um, it would go with that. So we would translate this, the uh, the beautiful women of the queen, or the beautiful wives of the, of the king, either one. The beautiful wives of the king is how we would translate that. Ra'av ha'ir hadala. 
Re'av ha'ir hadala. All right, let's just see. We see the adjective here with a comment say, and um, so we see that we know that ha'ir is feminine. This is, so it must agree with ha'ir. So we would say re'av again the the simple shiva under the first syllable of the two syllable word is telling you that that is a construct now. And this would be the famine, and this must be masculine because it's not agreeing with that. The, ma the famine of the poor city. The famine of the poor city. The law is poor. Okay, let's go down here, number uh, 20 here. Nevi A, Hair, Hara A. We want to look for the adjective first. If, because this one is an adjective, remember the adjectives, Hebrew adjectives will follow the nouns that they modify. So in this case, we have, we look and we see the comments hey ending here. And again, we have high ear, so we know that is feminine singular. We know ne, nevi a, this is prophets, this is masculine, plural, construct noun. The prophets of the evil city, or the wicked city, is how we translate that. Another 21 is Gemale Ha Anashim Ha Ashirim. Okay, Gemale Ha Anashim Ha Ashirim. All right, we want to look for the adjective here, and here we have Ha Ashirim, which means rich. <clears throat> and so we here see the Hirik Yod Mem Sufit that tells us that is masculine plural. And what you have to see what else it, it uh, is masculine plural here. Uh, okay, we have the uh, Gemale is masculine plural construct. Uh, so possibly we could have two different ones, but. It, it makes sense just really one way uh, to translate this. Uh, we, it would be best to say the camels of the rich men. Um, I, don't, yeah, I mean, possibly you could say the rich camels of the men, but that uh, <laughs> doesn't make any sense. So it would be the the camels of the rich men because Hayashirim ha agrees with uh, Hanashim uh, here. So, but grammatically it could fit with this one, but it doesn't make any sense with Gemale. All right, and we have 22. Hekal Ha'ir Hagadol. Hekal Ha'ir Hagadol. So we look at the adjective Hagadol. What does it agree with? Does it agree with Ha'ir? No, we know that Ha'ir is feminine. Gadol is masculine and singular. So it must agree with Hekal or Hekal here, temple. So we would say the great temple of the city. The great temple of the city. Because city is uh, definite, the temple must be definite. All right, let's go on, on with our homework with some more of the translation here. Uh, okay, we want to get it over here to number 23. We have Ame Ha'arts Hatova. Ame Ha'arts Hatova. And um, we look at Hatova, which is a, an adjective. It means good. We see the comments hey ending here. That tells us it's feminine, singular. And we look for another noun that must be feminine, singular here. And we have, uh, we know Ame. Is I mean, which is masculine plural. The Sarah telling us it's masculine plural construct, so it wouldn't agree with that. So it must agree with high arts, which land is feminine, and so it would be um, the peoples or the nations of the good land. The peoples or people of the good land or nations of the good land either way it could be translated either one because Hatova agrees in gender number with high arts here <clears throat> number 24 is Machane Hayove 
Machane ha oyev. All right, and so we look at this uh, hmm, machane. What is this? Oh, that comes from the word machane, which has a segol. But when the segol, when that noun is in construct, the segol lengthens to a sere. So this is a noun that is in construct with ha oyev. The camp of the enemy. Oyev is the enemy. So, and it has a definite article. So we would say the camp of the enemy here. That sere at the end is telling you that that noun is in construct. There is a construct noun uh, in relationship to ha -yo ha oyev. Number 25, we have Avodat Beit Adonai. Avodat Beit Adonai. Uh, one thing we'll look for here is we have a proper name here um, of, of the Lord's name here. And we have uh, the Patak Tav that tells us that that is feminine singular construct. <clears throat> Then, but we also have bait, which we know that is construct also from bite, because the um, the patak the hierik yod contract into a seriod in certain uh, monosyllables when they go from absolute to construct, and this is one of those cases. And this is what we're more familiar with than anything else is bait than bite. So we would say we got two nouns that are in construct with the absolute noun, which is uh, Adonai here. So we would say the work of the house of the Lord. The work, which comes from Avodah, this is feminine singular, so uh, feminine singular construct, the house, the work of the house of the Lord is how we translate this. Number 26, B'nai Hanavi'im. Hagedolim. We have the adjective here. Hagedolim has the masculine plural ending here, so it must agree with uh, Hanavi'im. Hmm. And also can agree with Bene, because Bene is masculine plural. Although it's construct, it still agrees with it. So we could translate this as the sons of the great prophets having Gedolim agreeing with Nevi'im. Or we could say the great sons of the prophets. Either one would be grammatically correct in there. Number 27, we have Shofet Ha'arts Hayashar. Shofet Ha'arts Hayashar. So <clears throat> we want to look at the adjective Hayashar. That is masculine singular. And we know how arts is feminine singer, so it doesn't agree with it, so it must agree with Shofate for judge. So we say the upright judge of the land. The upright judge of the land. All right, let's go to 28 here. Uh, Benot Hazakain Hayafot. Benot Hazakain Hayafot. Uh, we look at uh, the adjectives here, hayafot. This is feminine plural. So we need to see what else is feminine plural. Well, we see benot, another oat here. That tells us the oat tells us that is feminine plural. So this benot is a feminine plural construct noun from banim, I mean from bana. Uh, so it's for daughters. So this is Benot. The daughters, the beautiful daughters of the elders, how we would translate that. That's the only possible translation. The, the beautiful daughters, how you folk goes with Benot, agrees with it, gender number and definiteness in this case because the Benot gets its definite article from Hazakain. So um, <clears throat> from the absolute noun Hazakain here. So that's basically the beautiful daughters of the elder. Number 29, we have Bate Ha'ir Hake Tane. Nah. Bate Ha'ir Hake 
tana. And so we look at the word for small, haketana, and we see the common say ending. So we say to ourselves that must be a feminine singular ending here. There must be a feminine, and we need to look and see what is a feminine singular noun here. Well, we look at bate. Bate is looks like we know that that is um, masculine plural, so that can't be it. And we look at high ear, and high ear is, is feminine singular, so we must agree with high ear. So it would be the the houses of the small city. The houses of the small city is how we translate that. Number 30, we have Yemei Hamil Chama Hagadola. Yemei Hamil Chama Hagadola. We look at Hagadola, which is an adjective. It's got a comments hey ending. <clears throat> we look and say, okay, what other noun has a comments hey ending? Or which is feminine singular? Well, here it is. Uh, it's Milchama. So it must agree with Milchama because we know that this one is Sarayot here is telling us that is masculine plural. And that is the uh, masculine plural construct ending for of Yom for days. So the days of the great battle. That's how we translate the days of the great battle. All right, let's go ahead and go on here. It's more Bible translation. What we're going to do here. All right, we're going to go in here and say Malak Adonai. We know Malak is a, uh, well, this is basically telling us the Patak's here are telling us that this is, um, the Patak under the Ak here is telling us that that is a um, construct. Uh, noun. Uh, so basically, that is the messenger of the Lord or the angel of the Lord. Uh, number two is Kecho Cheve Hashemayim. Again, the Sariot is a dead ringer to tell you that that is a masculine plural construct noun. The Kaf. Up on, uh, is a preposition attached to kochave. So it, said it would be like, or according to, like the stars of the heaven. Hashemaim is a the absolute noun in that construct phrase there. Like the stars of the heaven. That comes out of Genesis twenty two seventeen. Number three is go ye go. Yay ha arts. Go yay ha arts here. That would be the nations. This is masculine plural, this serio is masculine plural construct from Goy. And Goyim is the masculine plural absolute, and this is the masculine plural construct. The Hirkyod, Mem Sufit or Final Mem changed to a serio. That's what you want to look for is a serio here when you see that. Um uh, in there. So this was be the nations of the land or of the earth. The arts. Number four we have Shalom Hasson. Um, so we look at you no know, normally Shalom. Again there's that Shiva under that first syllable of a two syllable word. Dead ringer tell you that that is a construct now. The peace or the well being of the flock is how we would translate that. Number five, Me'an She, Me'an She Habait. Me'an She Habait is what we translate that right there. So it's it'd be, May is the preposition men attached to a masculine plural construct noun of An She. Remember it comes from Anashim, uh, which is actually, and then uh, comes from Ish for man. Um, so basically, uh, this is from the men of the house. And Habait is the uh, absolute noun. So from the men of the house is how we translate this. Number six, Ervat Haaretz. Ervat Haaretz. Or you could use that, translate that, uh, that vav as a wa. Ervat Haaretz. But um, 
either way, the Patak Tav is telling you that there is a feminine singular construct noun in relationship for her arts. So this is the nakedness of the land. The nakedness of the land. <clears throat> All right, number seven. Number seven, we have Ve'ele Shemot B'nai Yisrael. Ve'ele Shemot B'nai Yisrael. All right, we have here the demonstrative um, <clears throat> pronoun, Ele. And so we have to look and see, is this a, a demonstrative adjective or is this a demonstrative um, pronoun? And because it comes at the very beginning, normally in front of the noun uh, of there, and uh, it's going to more likely be treated as a demonstrative pronoun. And these are, we've got to put the to be verb, these are shemot, feminine plural construct noun, the names of bene, masculine plural construct noun of Israel. So you got two construct nouns there with a demonstrative pronoun. These are and these are the names of the sons of Israel. Is how we would translate that. Remember if it was if this was going to be <clears throat> if this demonstrative uh, pronoun was going to be a demonstrative adjective, it would have been at the after the construct behind the nouns. Uh it actually have been after Israel because Israel is the is the absolute noun, so it would actually been placed after it, and it would have had a definite article on it since Israel is a proper name. It would have had a definite article on it right there. Uh, these other two, uh, Shemot and Bene, could not have had a definite article because they're construct nouns. <clears throat> so this is basically, and these are the names of the sons of Israel. Number eight here we have, um, let's see, number eight we have Am Bene Yisrael. Am is the um, singular here. It, it normally would have a comets, but it's got a patak. So that patak is telling you that is a, a monosyllable word that's re, that reduces down from a comets to a patak. That's telling you that, that is a in construct. And so this is the, the people of the sons, Bene is masculine plural construct of Israel. The people of the sons of Israel. Israel is the absolute noun, Bene is the masculine plural construct noun, and Am is the, uh, is the singular noun. I think that it's probably masculine singular construct. Okay, Yeshuat Adonai. Number nine, Yeshuat Adonai, the Patak Tav tells us right off the bat that is a feminine singular construct noun from Yeshua. And actually it's Yeshua's name. Uh, it means the noun for salvation. Um, so it is the, the salvation or the deliverance of the Lord. The deliverance or the salvation of the Lord. Uh, Adonai here is your... Um, proper noun in, in absolute form here so um, again we're looking for these little endings to show us whether it is uh, a feminine uh, construct singular or feminine plural construct masculine singular construct masculine plural construct uh, <clears throat> we're memorizing to recognize number 10 Yom HaShabbat Yom HaShabbat this Yom, remember Yom is whole and vav. This is a monosyllable, and it has what they call a irreducible vowel. This whole and vav will not reduce. So it can be these nouns that are, have irreducible vowels in them, these single-syllable words, uh, are both can be both absolute and construct. And so this would be the day of the Sabbath, HaShabbat is the uh, being used here day of the sabbath sabbath being used here as a absolute noun here <clears throat> okay let's go to number 11 call divre adonai call divre adonai and we know that call 
this uh, comet Satouf right here. This is not a comet. This is a comet Satouf that is telling you that that is a um, that basically is in construct. Okay, and the seriote here is telling us here that this is masculine plural construct. So this must be Adonai must be um, must be the absolute noun. So it'd be all of the words of the Lord. Or we'd say all the words of the Lord. But literally it's all of the words of the Lord. <clears throat> so we got both of them here. And the reason why you have this reduction here. Um, here is because also you got that makaif attached to divrei. The accent shifts from kol and over to here. And then it actually shifts over here. Um, so that. That hole that would normally be up above the cough here reduces to a comma a tooth. That is a reducible long vowel. Hole is a reducible long vowel and reduces down to a short O of ha, of uh, comma a tooth. Safer, hybrid, safer, hybrid. Uh, again, safer is a seglet noun. Seglet nouns can, in their singular form, can be either construct or absolute. In this case. Is construct <clears throat> the book of the covenant the book of the covenant 13 kevod adonai kevod adonai we see that the here uh, kevod the what normally would be a comet under the cough has reduced to a simple shiva again when you got a two syllable noun and the shiva is under the first syllable that's a dead ringer tail that is in construct. The glory of the Lord. And we put the on it because Adonai is a proper name. So the definiteness would go with the glory of the Lord. Number 14. Achare Mot Moshe Evid Adonai. Achare Mot Moshe Evid Adonai. That's okay. So we see the seriode here on Achare, uh, which is telling you basically after, after the things after, it's actually saying it's actually saying it's masculine plural construct. The things after, mot is actually again another construct noun for moet. It's just it's the same type of contraction as you had with by it. Um, remember, it's two different forms of contraction of a single noun, and and it contracts into a whole and vav. So as so the things after the death of Moshe, and then it goes here. That's one construct, one construct, two constructs, and here's the absolute noun. Moshe is the uh, absolute noun, and then it has Evid. Adonai. Evid, it can be either um, masculine, singular, absolute. It's a seglet noun. You can see the goals here. This tells you it's a seglet noun. Or it can be uh, masculine, singular, absolute. Or masculine, singular, construct. In this case, because it's attached to, to another noun, which is a proper noun here, this has got to be construct. So after the things of the death of Moses, the servant of Adonai, <clears throat> the servant of Adonai. So you actually you got one, two, three constructs in, uh, nouns. You got two in this first construct chain, and one in this other construct chain here. May Eretz Mitzrayim me bet evadim. May Eretz Mitzrayim me bet avadim. <clears throat> okay, what we have here is, um, let's look and see what here. Uh, may, there's, here's men, the preposition men attached to a noun, Eret. All right, from the land of Egypt, from Mibet, from the house of Evadim, slavery or slaves. It's actually masculine, plural, absolute. So we have. Eretz, which you remember, Eretz is a seglet noun in the singular <coughs> form here. So you have um, from the land of Egypt, from the house of 
the slaves or from the or from slaves you know, this is actually indefinite here but um so it's, it's being described so you have meerits which is one uh, construct now here's your absolute noun in mitzrayim and then the other construct noun is me bait and then avadim here's your absolute noun here so it's from the land of Egypt, from the house of slavery or slaves. All right, let's keep on going down here with some translation here. All right, we have Rekiv Eish Besuse Eish. Okay, Rekiv is a construct noun. Uh, this is a, a seglet noun here. This is seglet. So it's in construct for Aish, the chariot of fire, and this is a conjunction here separating it, and the horses of fire. The chariot of fire and the horses of fire. The serio tells us that it is masculine plural construct. Harbait Adonai. Harbait Adonai. The Again, this normally would have a common subunder if it was a, if it was an absolute, but since it is a patak up under that hay, that's telling us that that is a uh, construct noun. So it would be the mountain of the house of Adonai. The mountain of the house of Adonai. Both the definite article, because Adonai is a proper noun, you would put definiteness on the mountain of the house of of Adonai. We know bait is construct. Comes from bait. Okay. Bishnat Molt Hamelik. Bishnat Molt Hamelik. All right. We know that this is um, the bait here is a preposition. Comes from sh and with Shana, we see that Patak, that Patak Tav there is telling us that is a feminine singular construct now with a preposition here from Shana. This is Be Shana. So basically, um, because you got that here gear, you can't have two uh, uh, simple Shavas, one in the first syllable and the other in the second. The first one will link to a here, just like Devarim uh, happens it um, same thing. You have that hierarch code coming in the first syllable and the second Shiva being non vocal closing out that syllable. So Bishnat. Uh, this would be uh, in the year of Mot, the death of the king, Hamelik. So in the year of the death of the king is how we would translate that right there. You got two um, construct nouns, one right after the other, Shinat and Mot. In the year of the death of the king. Number 19 is Da'at. Da'at. The accent is, is over here on the first syllable. So that is telling us that that is a seglet noun. Uh, that would be knowledge. So um, it would be the knowledge of God in the land. The knowledge of God in the land. Da'at is, you remember, da'at, seglet nouns don't always have to have seglets uh, or segols. Uh, they can be combinations, segol here and then a patak there, or, or segol and a, or holem and a segol. I mean, so you'll get familiar with those seglet nouns. Uh, in your vocabulary, you go through there and it will show you which nouns are seglet. And there are a bunch of seglet nouns in the Hebrew language here. Number 20 is Torat Moshe. Torat Moshe. That again, that uh, Patak Tav is telling us that that is a feminine singular construct noun in relationship here to Moshe. So it would be the Torah or the law of Moshe, Moses. The law of Moses. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into um, some construct nouns here. It wants us to give the construct form of each of the following absolute nouns. And this is pretty much something that, uh, you remember, a segment noun is but can be both, in the singular, can be both absolute and construct, so just remember that.
All right. All right. So we're going to go here to yell it. That accent, that little carrot of that first syllable is telling you that that is a uh, masculine singular. Uh, now, singular noun for boy. And so we know that the absolute is also the construct is just like the absolute. We see Nahar here. Nahar has got the comments, comments, vowels up under it. So we use the vowel reduction of 1a and 1b here under a closed unaccented syllable. The comments here will reduce to a patak under an open, uh, which is na, up an, over an open unaccented syllable. The comments under the noon will reduce to a shava. So we have noon with shava, ka, uh, hey with a patak with a resh, nahar. Again, that's the one I told you to look for. If, if you don't recognize the reduction of the patak, just look at the shiva under the first syllable, and that will tell you that that is a construct now. Kohavim, uh, stars, masculine plural, absolute noun. So what we do here to get it into construct is we take the hierarch yod, mims of feet, replace it with a seri yod, and then we reduce the comets and the chaf here to a simple shiva, just like we did here with this noon here. And um, and then, of course, the historical long vowel of the, of the whole and vav remains the same. So we got come up with kol cheve. Kol cheve. Here for stars of. Na'ar is a again the accents on the first syllable so that's telling you that's the second noun so the construct form would be identical to it but not our i mean for peoples the hierarchy of mims and feet will uh will drop off and it will turn into a serayode and that's all that happens here the Patak and the iron will remain the same. Number six, Kohanim. Yeah, the hierarchy of mims of feet telling us that's masculine plural. That's just going to um, uh, drop off and be replaced with a seriod. Kohane. Kohane. Lechem. Again, another seglet noun is going to be Lechem. A construct seglet noun. Safer, another <coughs> second noun in the absolute is going to be safer in the construct form. Number nine, anon for cloud. Again, we're going to have two things happening here. We're going to have the rule 1a and 1b. We're going to have the close, ac the close unaccented syllable of the noon, the comments of the noon, nine, is going to reduce to a patak. And the comets up under the ion, what would normally reduce as a simple shiva, because the ion is a guttural, gu reduces to a compound shiva, or what we call a hatef patak, which then, this is what we have, anan, the construct form of the word anan. Gemalim, for camels, hierarch yod, mims of feet, here is going to be dropped off, and you're going to have um, basically just a seriod. And that's the only thing really that really happens there. Everything remains the same. Just a seriod for showing its masculine plural construct. Ra'av for famine. Ra'av for famine is going again. You got the comments, comments, the first syllable which is the I in the bait with the comments is going to be reduced to a patak under that I in. And the second rule uh, is a open uh, unaccented syllable. The comments is going to reduce to a simple shiva under the resh. Remember resh is the only, is a guttural, it's a semi-guttural. It rejects doubling, but it does take a vocal shiva, simple shiva. Whereas the other gutturals uh, do not take a vocal shiva. They take a high tap. Uh, okay, so what we have here is a rash with a simple shiva and a patak under the eye in here.
drive. Again, this is the dead ringer here to tell you that that is a two-syllable noun, a Shabbat of the first syllable. Gamal, for camel, the only thing, the two things that happen is the comments on the mem reduces that closed, unaccented syllable to a patak, and the comments on the gimel here uh, in an open, unaccented syllable reduces to a Shabbat. Gamal. Shekel, I mean Shekel, Shekel, sorry about that, Shekel, um, second noun, carrot showing you that's the goal, it's the second noun, same thing for construct. Hekal, uh, the, th the only thing you'll have here to reduce is basically the comments under the Chaf here, uh, reduces down to a Patak, so you have Hekal here, or Hekal. Uh, if you want to do it correctly. Uh, number 15, we have Malka. Alright, remember we got to, this is the comments hey feminine noun, so the hey is going to drop out, the tav is going to take its place, and the comments is going to reduce to a patak. So you're going to have Malkat here, with the patak tav ending on it. So it goes from a comments hey ending to a patak tav ending. A banim. There's two things that have to happen here. The hierico mem, sufit, or final mem, will uh, drop off and a, a seri yod will take its place. And then the comments under the first syllable will reduce to a simple shava. Because that is an open, unaccented syllable, the comments will reduce to a shava here. And it's benay. Karam, seglet noun. Karam is construct. Malak. You see how we have the malak? We have the comments under the olive here. The This is a closed, unaccented syllable, so that will reduce to that comments will reduce to a patak. Everything else remains the same. Ma'ak. Okay. Sadot for fields. This is a, a feminine plural. Feminine plural uh, absolute noun, sadot. You remember the feminine plural are both the same in the absolute and in the construct. So the oat remains when we carry it over into construct, feminine plural construct. The only thing that reduces is the comments under this first open syllable, an accent syllable, sa, with a sin. The comments reduces to a sh simple shava. So it becomes a dot. A number 20, shana for a year. We have a comments, hey, this is a comments, hey, feminine ending here. The hey drops out, the top takes its place, the comments is reduced to a patak. And then we have an open, unaccented syllable with the shin and the comments. That comments reduces to a simple shava. Shinat is how we would have that in the construct, feminine singular construct form. Of Shana. Again, this practice is very good. It just, it just makes you use those, uh, look at those rules, use those rules of reduction, uh, recognize whether it's feminine singer, comment say, or um, uh, mainly the rules of 1A and 1B for vowel reduction here. Okay, we have the Tefillah, which is the feminine singular absolute for prayer. If we want to make it feminine singular absolute, what we would do is just that hay will drop out, tav will take its place, the comments will reduce to a patak, as we have in tefillat. Levav for heart. The thing that will happen here is basically the comments will reduce under this closed on accent syllable of bait, comments bait, uh, into a patak. And the seri under the lamed will reduce to a simple shava in that open, unaccented syllable. Just like a comments reduces to a simple shava, a seri will too. We have neum. 
under saying and that um is in the absolute form here it's the same in the construct that um mechomot uh, for places whole you have the whole above top telling us that's a feminine plural absolute remember the same thing for the feminine plural construct no change here there's no re vowel reduction because you have a simple shiva and a whole and vav. A whole and vav is irreducible and simple shiva is as reduced as it can get. Mishpatim. We're going to take the hiric yod mim sufit off of here and replace it with a seri yod. That's the shows the masculine plural construct. You want to take the comets under the uh, pay. Because that is an open unaccented syllable, it reduces to a simple shiva. So you have mish pete. Mish pete. Sounds like some type of dessert or something. Okay. Uh, hechalim. Hechalim. A masculine plural for temples. The hiric yod mims of feet drops off. The serio takes its place. The comments under the chaf, under the chaf reduces to a simple shiva. Hey chale is how that happens here. This chaf and this comments is a open. It's rule one b an open um, uh, unaccented syllable reduces to a simple shiva. Uh, Gevulim. The hierarchy of the feet drops off, and a serio takes its place. Shurik is historical long, so it does not reduce. And the sh the uh, shawa simple shawa up under the gimel is completely reduced down, so no other changes happen, and thus you have gevule gevule for the masculine plural construct. Or borders. Davar, our classical example that we use for rules 1a and 1b, the uh, closed on accent soul of the vet, the comments and resh, reduce, the comments reduces to a patak under your open on accent syllable of your dalit and comments, the comments reduces to a simple shiva. And you have Devar. Mishpat, the only thing that reduces here uh, is the uh, 1A, where you have basically the uh, the closed on accent syllable of the pate comets tet. Uh, the comets reduces to a patak. Mishpat, or mishpat, whichever way you want to pronunciate that. All right, number 30, we have sus. All right, remember there are certain nouns that have the historical long vowels in them that will not, they will be both the same in the absolute and the construct. So, sus is both absolute here, singular, and it's both masculine um, singular uh, absolute here and masculine singular construct there. Sus. Shemot, um, you have a feminine plural absolute noun for names when you want to make it construct remember the oat doesn't change it remains the same it's both uh, absolute feminine plural absolute and feminine plural construct are the same the only thing that you reduce is the sere up under the shin because that is an open unaccented syllable it reduces to a simple shiva just like the comments would up under there so it shmote uh, we have Torah, number 32. Torah is a comments, hey, uh, feminine singular absolute ending here. Uh, the hey drops off. The top takes its place. The pa the comments under the resh reduces down to a patak. And we have Torah here. The whole and vav here is uh, irreducible. So it does not reduce down at all. Okay, let's get up here a little bit here. All right, uh, let's go to uh, Gibor for warrior. 
Again, in Gibor, we have a whole and vav, so that is irreducible. It doesn't change. Uh, Herrick is irreducible. It's uh, a a a uh, short i syllable uh, vowel, so it's the same thing. Gibor is the same, both uh, in the absolute as in the construct. Panim, Herrick yod memsefit. That's going to change to a seriod. And the comments under the pay, it's in an open, unaccented syllable, is going to reduce to a simple shava. Thus, we have pane. The faces, uh, faces of yamim. Uh, here, code mim feet here. Uh, we do uh, drop off the seri yod attach, and the comments under the open unaccented syllable of the yod and comets the commas reduces to a simple shava under the yod so it becomes yame yamim for c's here you basically the hierarch yod memsafit drops off seri yod takes its place attaches on and so uh, the patak remains the same so it's yame Yame. Give a. Give a is the uh, feminine singular absolute for heel. You see the comment say tells you that that is feminine singular absolute. To make it feminine singular construct, the hay drops off, the top takes its place, the comments on the iron reduces to a patak, and we have give at. Basar, uh, we have the comments, comments under here. You have a closed syllable and open syllable. So rules 1a and 1b will take its place. The comments under the sin in that closed unaccented syllable will reduce to a patak. And the comments under the open syllable of bait, comments will reduce to a simple shava and grant you basar. Neveim. Which is masculine plural absolute. The Hiric Yod Mimsafi is telling you that it is absolute, and that's masculine, that's plural. So we to bring it into masculine plural construct, we'll take the Hiric Yod and Mim, the plural ending off of it, and we would put a Seri Yod takes its place, and and that's the only reduction that you have. The only change you have. Nevi A. Nevi A is the masculine plural construct of Nevi'im. You have Shulchan. Shulchan. Here, the only change you have here is um, in your closed, unaccented syllable of Chet, Comets, Nun, Sufit, uh, the Comets reduces to a Patak. And so the Kibbutz under your shin remains the same. So it's Shulchan or Shulchan, either one. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and end. That ends our lesson for on homework for right now. We'll get into the rest of the homework in our next session here.